Hi and welcome to this video tutorial. In today's video I'm going to teach you how to create a registration form, logging screen and ability for users to update their complete profile. Before I show you what we're going to be building today, I want to point out that this type of a workflow can be applied to many different applications and industries. In our example we're using an alumni registration form for an education industry. As I mentioned, this type of registration form can be applied to many different industries, for example real estate, fitness, healthcare and many more. The idea is to have users provide some basic info at first, create their login credentials at the bottom, and then have the ability to log into their account. And upon logging in, they can now update their complete profile. Uh, users can edit their personal information right away. This information was already provided on the registration form, so they don't need to refill that information again. They can update their email and password and then we have a call to action at the bottom where I can move to the second page which is the education info and here I can complete my profile for the education and at the very bottom I can update and complete my entire profile now due to time constraints we have only set up two pages but keep in mind that you can have additional data pages so if you wanted to do employment information or some hobbies you can keep going and you can create a chain of the entire profile page on the right side I have set up two additional navigation menus to quickly be able to uh, navigate back to personal info or education info and at the end you can complete the profile so now let's log inside our Caspio account and let's take a look and see how this application was built I am on my dashboard page I already have named my application so I'm gonna go ahead and click on open and I'm gonna go directly to my tables and for this specific workflow you only need one table let me open up my table in design mode so we can look at the structure and the important fields that you'll need is some kind of a unique ID that's going to be assigned to your registered members I have called mine alumni ID I have a set to auto number and I made it unique and going down a little bit here I also have email which is also unique that's gonna be my username for the users to log into their account just make sure you have some kind of a username that's unique because you can't have the same username twice per password and then password I have set up as a best practice to do a smart type password so it's encrypted inside a table level when you're done go ahead and click on save to save your table after you've added after you've added all of your fields that you're collecting name your table and after you've named your table you should be able to see it here in the list of all of your other tables like I said this application only requires or this workflow only requires one table the next step is to go to authentications and to create our logging screen for our users so we're gonna click on new I'm gonna use my table because that's where all the credentials are gonna be you have the option to use Express to be able to quickly log into an account or use custom which is my personal preference because it gives us more options to be able to edit our logging screen I usually go with the recommended option but keep in mind that you can also apply ID services to your logging screen so if you wanted your users to be able to log in using Google Facebook Twitter that capability is available inside Caspio as well for the email field for the label I'm gonna rename that to say email and then we have the password field and at the very bottom here you have advanced settings go ahead and expand that and we're gonna need to make a few changes here for the logout destination so when a user logs out of their account I want them to be able to go to login.html I'm gonna keep that relative because I want to maintain the entire URL of my website and the reason why I want to take them back to the logging screen so they can quickly log back in if they log out of their account the next is timeout and redirection for this I'm gonna set it to two hours and I also want them to go to login.html if they're timed out of their session so what this means really is if you ever log inside your account let's say on Facebook or MySpace or your bank account after a certain time their system is gonna log you out and you'll, re re you'll be required to log back in so this is why you want to make sure you enable this and keep everything else the same and go ahead and click on create and name your authentication I'll just abbreviate something here for alumni authentication click finish and here is my authentication that I'm going to be applying to my data pages alright so the next step is to actually go to data pages and start building our forms and reports 
And the first one that I'm going to build is our registration form, which if I go back to our website example, and if I log out of my account, here is my registration form. And I'm going to be actually deploying our form to my sample template that I have created for us to show you how you can actually embed something like this into your own website. So I'm going to click on New under Data Pages, click on New. Make sure you select Submission Form because that's going to become our registration form. Select your one table that we have. Apply your specific style that you have set up. I have a sample style that I have created for this application that I'm going to be using. But keep in mind you can go to the Styles tab over here and then fully modify the look and feel of your own style to match the look and feel of your website. I'm going to be applying my localization for English. And now let's call this data page registration form. You don't need to set anything else up in here. You can enable advanced options if you wanted to have more features available to your fields to be able to create multiple columns. But there are two ways of doing that. I'm actually going to leave this as is for now. And the fields that I would like to include on my registration form are all the fields all the way up until the password field. The rest of these are going to be in my update profile page once the user logs in. The registration date, I'm actually going to make this a timestamp. The user doesn't need to see that field, but in my table it's going to stamp the date and time of the submission. For title, you'll see that everything by default that's set up is a text field automatically. But if I wanted to change the title to let's say a drop down, from, the, from here we can select drop down. And let's add some custom values here so we can say select title. Make sure you delete the value because you're not really selecting this. And then go ahead and add a list of your titles. And maybe one more. Now you could also have a lookup table to be able to link this drop down to your tables. But because I don't have a table of all the titles, I had to create custom values. First name, why don't we make this field required? Obviously that's going to be a text field in this case. Last name, you can also make this field required, which means they have to fill that field in before they can register. Date of birth, gender, and just go down the list of all of your fields. For gender, for example, instead of text field, why don't we make this a radio button, and we'll just quickly say male or female. Notice that this label here is written without any spaces. It's not really clear what it's supposed to say, because that's the way I had it written inside my table when I created the field. But you can rename that here inside the label section. So I can say with a question mark, for example. And here we can also enable radio buttons. I can say phone, maybe email, and maybe no preference. At the very bottom, we have the email and password fields. For the email field, notice that it's automatically required because we made it unique inside our table. And the password field, we want to make that required too so they can create a password and in my label I usually like to say something like create password so that the user knows that they're actually creating a password. Down here below I have a confirm password so they make sure they put the same password twice. On the next screen you can actually change the confirmation message so instead of saying something like this we can rewrite it and say you have successfully Registered, please log into your account to complete your profile. And when you're done, go ahead and click Finish. And here is your registration form. You can immediately preview this inside your account to see what it looks like. And note that it's really just one column. We don't have that much time in the demo to show you how you can configure multiple columns, but that is a possibility inside Caspi. It's actually fairly easy to do as well. But due to time constraints, we're going to keep it as simple as this with a single column. And if you're happy with the look and feel of this form, you can now click on the Deploy button, enable access to your data page, copy the snippet of code, and paste that code into your registration page. Once you have copied your code, go ahead and open up your script where you plan on embedding that form. 
Uh, I'm using direct to HTML here because I'm fairly technical myself, but if you are using GoDaddy or Wix or Yola, just know that Caspio is compatible with those tools as well. And uh, for my index page, on my home page is where I want to publish my registration form. So I'm going to go ahead and paste my new code right over here. I'm going to save my index page. And in my template, I'm just going to go ahead and refresh my page. And it's going to show me my registration form right here on the index page or wherever you decide to publish that form. When you're done with the registration form, the next step is to create a logging screen, which we're going to go ahead and deploy right over here on this part of my website. Of course, you're going to probably have a different location on your website. And to create that logging screen, what we're going to need to do is create a new data page. And this time you're going to select an HTML data page. Click Next. Go ahead and apply your same style that you have. I'm using sample style, or you can use a different style if you'd like. I'm going to call this data page Login Screen. And I'm going to apply my English localization again. And here, what you're going to do is you're actually going to restrict access based on the authentication that you created earlier, which is the, whatever you named it. I have it uh, short alumni authentication. Click Next. And here what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to add a little bit of script for our redirection page where the user is going to go after they log into their account. And it's just a little bit of syntax here. We have script, open quotes, window.location equals in parentheses personal.html. Go ahead and close your quotation in a semicolon. And then go ahead and close your brackets. So what this means, if I go back to our demo website that we had, and if I go to login screen, Notice that my login screen is actually deployed on the login.html page. But if I do log inside my account, it's going to take me to personal.html where I have my update form deployed. So this is why we have to have this redirect in the Citus HTML data page. So just write the script, click Finish. And once you've created your login data page, go ahead and click on Deploy. Enable access to it. Copy your snippet of code again. And then we're going to go ahead and paste that code inside a login.html page. And I'm going to go ahead and place it in this part of my website. Let's go back to our example. Let's refresh our page. And there is my login screen. So it's still not completed because when I log inside my account, notice it's going to take me to personal.html page. But now I don't have anything deployed here. And now I have to build my personal update form. So let's go back to Caspio, click on New Data Page Type. And this time we want to build a single record update data page under Forms. Based on the same table, I'm going to use the same style. My localization, I'm actually going to use a different localization for this data page. And I'll show you in a couple of seconds why I'm opting out for a different localization. And I'm going to call this data page Personal Info. Again, we have to restrict access based on the authentication. Make sure that alumni ID and alumni ID are here both, uh, because what it's doing is verifying our user ID once we log into the account to make sure that it shows us our own information and not somebody else's. And the information that I would like to have on my first update form is, again, all the same fields that I had all the way up until the password field once I first log in. And here we can make them all editable. By default, they're all going to be display only. And maybe for the registration date, I can keep it as display only. And I can change my label to say something like this, member since. And they're going to be the member since that date that they registered. And then title, of course, just to save time, I'm just going to make a few of these editable. And just go down the list of all of your fields and change all the ones that you'd like to edit. And again, we can make them radio buttons, but for now I'm just making them text fields. I'm going to go ahead and click on Next. And here what you want to do is make sure you have set up, go to a new page. So once I click Update at the bottom, which is the call to action, I want my users to go to education.html page. Again, we're going to keep that relative. Okay. So again, let me go back to my website so you can see when I click on this button here at the bottom, it's taking me to education.html. 
And that's why inside the data page wizard, I have to list education.html at the end of this data page. Click finish and close. Now let's go ahead and deploy this by copying and pasting the code inside personal.html page right over here. Save it. We're going to edit our example and notice that I only made a few fields editable. And down below when I click on this, it's going to take me to education. And this is where I need to build my very last data page for this update form to work. So go back to data pages, click on new, and I'm just going to speed through this really quickly. And it's the same process. You select the update form, same table. Let's call this edu info, same style. And I'm going to go ahead and say education info for this localization. Restrict access based on alumni. Same thing, alumni ID needs to verify. And in my second update form, I'm going to list all of these fields. And on this screen, all we have to do is now is modify and edit each one of our fields. Highest degree earned, I'm going to make this a text field. And again, just to save time, we're going to make them all text fields. But of course, you can modify your own update form however you'd like. And when you're done, go ahead and click Finish here. Click on Deploy, enable access to your form, copy, and paste that inside your data page or inside your uh, HTML script. I'm going to paste it right over here. And let's go back to our template. OK, so that completes uh, the update profile page. And now I can navigate back and forth between both of my pages. And I did forget to mention one thing as far as localization. Why I'm using a different localization for each one of my data pages is so that I can update the label inside my button. So if you recall from my personal data page, I was using this localization, English Personal Info 1. So if I go back to my localizations here, and if I edit Personal English Info 1, Notice under buttons, under update, I have renamed my update button to say this. So that's why I have multiple localizations for each one of my forms so I can update the label button so users know they have a really good call to action and what they need to do next once they click on that button. And for my other localization that I'm using for education, which is this one here, notice I have update to complete profile. So if I go back to my template, if I come over here to the second page, I have this localization applied to this data page. And of course, you can go back to the personal page. People can log outside their account, and it'll take them back to the login logging screen. So that concludes the tutorial on how to create a registration form, login screen, and the ability for people to update their profile page. Hopefully, you're able to follow this tutorial, but if you do end up having any issues or running into any obstacles along the way, feel free to contact our technical support team and somebody will be more than happy to assist you. Thank you for watching.